my goodness! I didn't see you over there! Welcome to Rocky Railway! Hey, it's good to have you. I'm Deacon Joseph. We're so excited for today. I hope yesterday you enjoyed Saul and Ananias, the story we had for you. Today we're talking about Paul and how he gets shipwrecked with his companions. And the scripture passage for you today is going to be Psalm 31, 24. It's be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who trust in the Lord. So I hope you enjoy the story and you learn all about trusting in the Lord and all that he can do for your life. And always remember, Jesus pulls us through. Do, 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 do. Hey! I'm St. Paul, and God sent me on incredible journeys around the world to tell about his love, power, and hope. Your world needs the hope of Jesus, too. Circle some of the places where you live. Think about your neighborhood, your family's farm, your city block. Wherever you live, play and spend time. As you do, think of the people around you who need Jesus' power to give them hope. When I was in the city, I was telling everybody about the love of Jesus Christ, the gospel, and how much they needed him in his life, and how much he can change their whole world. However, the people in the city did not like what I was saying because I was challenging their religions and what they believed, and so they wanted to put me in prison. And finally, the guards got me and put me in prison and took me on a ship to take me back to Rome. Today's totally true story from the Bible may get your feet wet as we discover how Jesus' power gives us hope. Speaking of hope, I hope we don't run into any problems today. We'll get on a ship and I always get a little seasick out on the open sea. You might not want to stand too close to me. That could be a huge mistake. But the weather is supposed to be calm, so it sounds like smooth sailing. Ready to go aboard? Quick! They're taking me on the ship now. We have to get all the things that we absolutely need. So I need your help. I'm going to grab all the essentials before they take me on the ship so that I have it when I'm in Rome. I need you to do the same thing. Look around for anything that you think you need on the ship from your home and bring it with me on the ship. That needs to be bored on the ship. Pause this video again. Three essentials that you think could be useful. I sailed ship, uh, but it will come back to me. It's like it's like riding a bike, right? Except wetter and on wheels. I mean, no wheels. Oh my god! <laughs> everyone on your feet, and let's turn this place into a ship shape. Hey, everyone, stand up. Pretend to pull a rope and help me hoist the sails. <laughs> All right, pretend to mop the floors and help me swab this deck. Be quick about it, sailors. Almost there. All right, fire up the engines. Oh wait, there are no engines. This is biblical time. What can we do instead? We could use... The wind! The wind! We could use the wind! But there is no wind. Oh man, I guess we're just gonna have to sit here until the wind comes. We're kind of powerless. Once we were on the ship, the sails were snapping in the wind, and the ship shook in the wild waves. Storm clouds swelled in the dark sky. I had sailed the seas plenty of times as a missionary who brought the good news of Jesus to people far away. But now I was going on a very difficult kind of trip. This time I traveled as a prisoner, heading to Rome. There I'd stand trial for teaching people about Jesus 
and right now the weather seemed as frightening as my future. The weather caused trouble almost from the beginning. Over and over the wind blew us off course. I had a strong feeling that we needed to stop for a while. So I talked to the crew. If we're going like this, we're only going to run into trouble. We'll lose our cargo, the ship will wreck, and our lives will be in grave danger, I warned them. But most captains don't take sailing advice from prisoners. So we kept going. Sure enough, the weather got downright dangerous. Fierce storms blew in from every direction and battered our boat. It got so bad that the sailors had to toss most of our supplies overboard. After hard days and sleepless nights, everyone felt tired, hungry, and most of all, afraid. They were losing hope and fast. There's a lot of water slushing around down there. That means we're heading into really rough seas. I hope that Paul guy wasn't right about what he said was coming our way. That means things could get rough. Really rough. Uh-oh. Do you feel that? The wind's kicking up. Everybody, lead to port. That's your left. Now starboard. That's your right. Days. It's hopeless. It's time to lighten up the ship. Let's throw these boxes overboard. Throw your cargo overboard, too. <laughs> Let's check the store to see if Paul's still okay. Hunker down until we get back on deck. Finally, I gathered the ship's crew together. You should have listened to me. I told you things would get bad, I said to them. But don't lose hope. God's angel told me last night that I will make it to Rome before my trial. And everyone with me on this ship will be safe too. The winds kept howling and the sea kept tossing back and forth. The sailors worked hard to keep the ship afloat, but their muscles burned and their bellies growled. Worry and fear shadowed their eyes. So I spoke up again. We've been fighting this horrible weather for two weeks, I said. You've been so scared that you haven't eaten this whole time. Then I took some bread, thank God for it, and ate a piece. Pretty soon, everyone on board was eating and feeling much better. Paul says we should eat. We're going to need our strength. He gave us these. Everyone, grab a snack and eat it. Fast. Sure enough, our ship wrecked on an island. But every single crew member and prisoner made it safely to shore. God had saved all of us. Imagine being on that ship as it splintered under you. Lightning, wind howling. It must have been awful. I know, but Paul was right. Not one person on that ship was lost. Trusting in Jesus gave them hope. Go to page 14 in your book and look at the disciples' faces. Can you remember a time when you were that afraid? How did Jesus' power give you hope? Thanks for sharing. I know that my friendship with Jesus always gives me hope. I'm so glad I know Jesus. I know that praying about my situation and talking with God is helpful. Take a moment to pray that God's power will give you hope. Trust, Trust Jesus. Jesus.